The way to get rid of tension is to do just the opposite of all the things that cause it. Hello everyone, this is Hugo from Ichiban Painting and today I'll be showing you a little bit more, you know, because a lot of people ask me about how to do real rust effect uh, and doing more techniques using the brush, so basically that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm showing you, and I really do love you guys a lot because I could have done this with my airbrush and the looks are different. If you saw my previous video, I do have a video where I'm showing, um, you know, a technique using the brush. Uh, using the airbrush it does look different but it, it's way faster so in my line of work faster is better except if the client specifically ordered this technique but it was not ordered so I really did it for you so basically the thing you want to do on this technique is that you want to go in and use uh, a lighter color than your main color so here the main color is ultramarine blue and some midnight blue so basically you want to go in with your um, your electric blue which is lighter and do all the edges and here you're gonna see me using a sponge about right now um, is that actually there I prepare the area with some potty to make it look like bubbly texture from rust so basically I'm, I'm doing the whole uh, area there with the with the sponge just to give it a little bit of texture and everything like rust attacking and little dots of rust over there but everywhere else on the tank I'll just hit the edges um, with the lighter color so that's the first step you're gonna be doing in this technique and you just go over all the edges you don't need to do it all on all over the edges of course because this technique is, is you know it's to your liking this is weathering this tank for this particular tank was asked by my client that he wanted a look that the tank went to hell and back uh, you know so that's why I'm gonna be actually doing the this type of weathering and rust effect everywhere on the tank and as you can see there's bullet holes and everything so this tank is gonna look like it's been to you know in the middle of a campaign it just came back from a like you know 10 year campaign and and got the sh crap beat out of him and still rolling and still kicking ass so basically you just want to go in with your uh, with your um, your uh, blue and just or your lighter color and hit all the hedges Okay, so now once the majority of your thing is done, uh, you're gonna be using like three, I used three colors on this one, so charted brown, beastie brown, and, and black. Now I'm starting with the charted brown, I'm just gonna go into the patches of, uh, of uh, blue that I did, and I'm just gonna go in and, and do the whole, um, you know, like contour. And I'm really sorry, you know, you saw in the previous segment and, and this segment, my hair is getting in the way. Uh, this is a really a technique that you need to be really precise and I had to put my head down and, and be able to see really well what I was doing. So unfortunately I got too close from the camera. So I'm really sorry about that guys. Uh, in the next video I'll really try to, uh, to make sure that you know my head doesn't go there. But you can still see what I'm doing over there. So you basically want to go in and, and, and use your, your brown and, and go in fill in the, the areas. 
When you're gonna be doing the edges, it's really easy to fill in. You don't need to be that precise. But when you're doing the, the part where I did with the sponge, you really need to go tap it in and, and be really you know precise with that. Um, this technique is not about the blue, the, the, high, the, the first lighter color that you're gonna be using that's gonna set the technique. It's really when you go in with your brown and you're gonna go and shape the technique, uh, shape the shape of the rust and everything. That's where you need to be really precise. And the blue, you know, you can always go back. If you don't like the shape or it doesn't look really natural and stuff, you can still go back with the blue and, and reshape it. And then after that, uh, give it texture and shape with your browns. So now, uh, brown, uh, beast, be, uh, not beastie brown, but charted brown everywhere, I'm gonna do it. And then a little bit further down in the video, what I'm gonna be actually be doing is mixing black and charted brown. So I'm gonna be doing some, some, a little bit of texture in it with the black, straight up black, and a little bit of texture that I'm gonna be mixing black with charted brown just to give it a little bit more, a darker color. I'm gonna be hitting a couple of edges there. And then after that, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make some beastie brown and some charted brown to make it a little bit lighter and just to give it a over look, uh, overall, you know, better look. Of course, you can just do it straight up with the, the charted brown if you don't wanna spend too much time on it. It's still gonna look really, really nice, but, um, if you're using the other colors and give it a little bit more, uh, you know, a demarcation in the color, it's going to really set the tone into a really, really cool effect. But you need to really, you know, take in consideration before starting this technique. This technique takes forever. You know, uh, if we're thinking about time-wise, uh, this technique is probably going to take me to do the whole thing, especially this one, which it needs a whole lot of weathering. Uh, this technique is probably going to take me about five hours to do the whole thing or maybe less but you know i'm taking uh consideration what i did right now i already did the side of the tank uh in blue i did the upper part of the tank the top part of the tank and now i just did this area for you guys there what i'm working on and it took me about like an hour two yeah about an hour and a half to two hours so um to do the whole side on in blue on the other side and then after that do the whole brown everywhere it's gonna it's gonna take a long time so you need really need to take that in consideration before starting this technique So now again, I really want to apologize for you know you know guys putting the the, the hair in, in the camera was not great, but you can see the technique. I'll take pictures right now and put it at the end of the video so you can see it better. But I really like, I really hope you enjoyed it. I did this video especially and and thoroughly only for you guys on on YouTube, uh, not for anything else. Uh, I could have done this technique with my airbrush, but I did it for you. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. And um, I'll see, if you have questions, just ask, and I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to click down. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. It does help me a lot. And if you like the video, click like and leave me a comment. I'll see you on the next video, guys. Cheers.